Oakley Doakley, welcome back everyone. You know what time it is? It Tech Consults episode eight. Being said, we've actually skipped seven because it's a quite a comprehensive tech consult. I will be getting back and releasing that after the fact. So today, welcome all back to the Technus Corner. Don't forget to hit that like button in the meantime while you're here. It's a bit more of a showcasey sort of a day, pardon the pun, which is pretty lame, sorry. Um, but it's in relation to this case that we got here. Now, I apologize if the sticker bomb isn't to everyone's fancy in relation to the way it's been stickered. There's an MSI sticker here and I don't discriminate. So that is not my problem. It is actually done reasonably decently. Okay, but with that being said, what seems to be a very standard type of a case in relation to what we have here is a mid tower from roughly the 2015-2016 era and we'll open it up and have a bit of a look because I thought it was a nice time to showcase a case of this type of yesteryear genre just so that people can understand who are just getting enthusiastic about PCs can have the luxury of seeing what just a few years ago five six years ago was relatively budget orientated because this PC case was 90 Australian dollars at the time of entry into the market back then in around 2015 and it's known as the thermal take because thermal take is the make view 27 all right and 27 not 7 11 but speaking about opening things up 24 7 well we can start off with just on the basic for its era specific it's got eight pcie slots which is welcoming if you need that extra slot especially in this day and age and that's why i'm mentioning it's got such slight merit to having this case still in this day and age as a mid tower it's got some girth to it frankly so let's get into it so i don't keep you guys waiting too long and we'll get into a better viewing in relation to what we got here okay so eight slots there and usually one extra slot helps with you know gpus that are of a thicker nature and or something extra being held underneath that in this day and age and or water cooling and things like that if you need that extra space it's available and you can put things and attach those there too as well but it actually had five six years ago vertical mounting as well so it's a thing back then it's not completely brand new or anything like that it's become very more modernized in this day and age unfortunately for 90 australian dollars you can see that this case does come with an exhaust fan here, a 120 millimeter thermal take exhaust. That was about it. Even the PC riser necessary was a separate buy from thermal take and cost, I think, $35 US at the time, which was pretty pricey from my understanding. So not to sugarcoat things, I am leaning to the fact that, you know, you can essentially fit quite a girthy long PSU inside this. Get a better view on that around the side here now this material i definitely wouldn't say is thick bigsby was just wanting to talk to me but definitely not thin by today's standards right now the thermal take view 27 on the other hand has got one two three four caddies available for ssds or your two and a half inches right but also inside here it's got the availability for one two three and a half inch base which can all be being converted to ssd base if necessary so cool thing was it was all toolless so we've got one of the base here with our era specific samsung hard drive two terabyte pretty decent toolless so you guys could just essentially clip it in and bang she was ready to rock and roll with that being said we've only got one of those caddies for the time being that's all we need because not everything has survived in the years past its introduction into the market and there are newer variants of this notably if we were to turn this around this has got the on switch got a reset switch got two usb 2.0 headers it's got your audio in and mic in and it's got a usb 3.0 header as well so not too much io but just enough some but if we open it up here you may have already peeked in the bottom left corner i apologize my back is pretty shocking at the moment what is the standout feature for some is 
side and top view clear. It's a plexiglass side and top view panel, which is really nifty, especially for back in the age. So this is otherwise known as the View 27. And hence, now we know why it's the case. So it's sort of just goes back on there and just slides on and clips in. But with that being said, like the cool thing about this is if you look at the innovation, that was innovatively speaking, but it had its drawbacks. Cooling was limited to only intake and exhaust. It has rather robust for the space it consumes availability for intake, but intake wise, you had to provide your own fans. And taking off this plexiglass side and top panel, so we've got a couple of Corsa fans mounted in here. Exactly how to remove this front side panel is beyond me because I've seen people have it loose at the bottom and then jimmy it off the top. But I've tried to pull and the amount of force that's required to pull it off, I'm worried it's going to pop some stuff. So it may have been put on more securely than first four years past. So I don't want to spoil it for the customer. Otherwise, I make it completely spotless. But I did give it a bit of a spruce up in relation to this. Um, bottom side, it does have dust guard like huge. Not too bad, I'd say, in, in relation to its use currently. So I don't have to worry too much about that. The vacuum cleaner is currently disengaged. And it's got a couple of feet rubber over the years. It's missed a couple. But surprisingly, from my understanding, there was meant to be some form of access to something here on the bottom side. Can't see that. Um, what I heard about from hardware unboxed from memory from like five six years ago when i first noticed this case myself i was just interested intrigued and the hiat or the height case of current meta the aquarium looking thing this sort of reminded me of the fact that innovation has been around for years and honestly guys be picky and choosy regarding what you want to get but cut a long story short don't shun it too much. Just agree that it's not your cup of tea, but agree that the innovation of the casing is really good because eventually you'll get a novel case for yourself that comes out with your look. You know what I mean? Like that's the same with setups and that. Like someone might have a pink setup or something like that and I'll despise it, but love it at the same time. You get me? Enough being said here, what are we filling this case with? Well... <laughs> To an nth degree, it has to be genre specific, guys. So let's get into what we're building essentially today. So I'll pop this aside and bring over the hardware, shall we say. Ooh, ah, what has you got here? What has you got here? Alrighty, so that might be a better view for you all. Okay, so as usual, we've got a replacement of what was essentially a 550 watt, which may have been sufficient to power this PC of yesteryear before the upgrade of the CPU had occurred, okay? And the upgrade of the CPU meant that the ESP or the 12 volt rails for the CPU, the Quartz that power your graphics card, well, the Quartz that go to power the CPU, it requires a four pin and an eight pin as well, or double four, true? And with that being said, unfortunately, and that's located just here, unfortunately, that 550 watt power supply only had enough for an eight pin essentially. And sometimes people say that that four pin is just supplementary power. Don't worry about it. Honestly, with Tech Consult episode 8.0, we are doing an optimization stake regardless. It's one of those era specific. It's a 11th gen i7 11700K CPU under this monstrous Cooler Master Cooler. And we had some trials and tribulations essentially getting it to this stage. It's on the test bench officially, otherwise known as the, here's a word from our sponsor. For those who dare, for Asus Bling Crypto Gucci Bling, get your mitts ready, people. Up next, well, it's hot. Unleashing the ultimate power, PSU, Republic of Gamers, Asus. Bigsby, what do you want? I didn't understand that. Thanks, Bigsby. All right, get back to sleep, thanks. Okay, but with that being said, it's just utilizing a standard one terabyte ssd as a boot drive and surprisingly i've got the system tested 
running hardware wise everything's perfect in relation to the operating system that's all installed and ready to rock and roll with yeah including that the cpu has already been heavily optimized in relation to its maximum capabilities for all day undervolting overclocking whatnot and what else we've got here specific is as obviously what's powering it essentially which is the tough gaming 750 watt this this power supply costs you about a hundred australian dollars has a six-year warranty it's got two eps splitters and got plenty of power to power your graphics card as well it's a great addition if you've got the money to splurge now as well if you need to upgrade to a 750 things like 6700 6750s you know 3070s i believe um, 750 watts, plenty of power for that. And for $100, you get a bronze rated one. But more importantly, Asus backs it up with a six year warranty. So that's quite generous for something of that price category, especially in relation to its competition. That's going to be opened up. We may or may not do a specific unboxing for this. So look out for it. Otherwise, pay attention because you'll see the majority of it in this case specific working and running what essentially will be us having the privilege of building in what is essentially the view 27 produced by thermal take from around 2015 one of the first aquarium cases ever Actually, it wasn't. There was like a little Leanne Lee one where they literally turned it into an aquarium. Look out for that. It's, it's floating around YouTube. A few, it's a few years old now. Let's get into it. In fact, let's skip that. And within the click of my fingers, we're going to fast forward to what is going to actually be the benchmarking because I've got a treat for you all. Hopefully, we can replicate the results. But if not, please stick around and watch this. You will not want to miss. So let's go. So at the snap of my fingers, we're back and down, down, down. You wait, no, none of that hypno bullshit over there at the Technus Corner. Welcome back to the Technus Corner, y'all. Look, it's done. She or he, it, the machine, the machine, guys. I shit you not, we had it on the test bench. I've got, I did mention a surprise for you all. And we're going to see if we can recreate those results. It's always within margin of error. If nothing drastic has occurred during the installation process. But this thermal take view 27 case from 2016-ish or thereabouts. I think there's a review on it by Hardware Unbox from that era. Essentially, what we have here is a large gullwing window panel that continuously spans the entire left side and top of the case. Someone else was on it, be it Steve and or the other guy. I think it was the other guy's brother. Are you forgotten Tim's name? No, I haven't forgotten Tim's name. I just, you know, was trying to play cool. Like I'm not a shill for the hardware unbox and whatnot. So welcome back to Tech Consult episode 8. We've just done a hardware unbox episode as well in relation to what should have been the Technus Digest episode number five-ish or so. Forgot to mention it because it's a fresh series and this was in between the shooting of this episode of Tech Consults. And yeah, it's an interesting budget entry level PSU that I had no problems with building with, along with the honor of this thermal tape, View 27, with both the plexiglass front as well as top side, the exhaust fan is now in the exhaust position and the air cooling, be it the massive double rad air cooler is sucking in from the front side, from the two course of fans. Everything's connected. We just have to turn her on, plug her in and turn her on. So let's get a closer look at what we're dealing with essentially after we get and confirm that it's operational again. So let's go, peeps, and make sure testy testy it runs like a ox. This computer is ox. It's very strong, strong computer. Now I just need a mouse. Oh, get the mouse now. <laughs> you play with the mouse. You like the mouse, yeah? Nudge, nudge. No, I think you mean the cats, mate. Oh, 
You don't like mouse. We like Mickey Mouse and Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. You ever had those people around? They're very loud. They drink a lot of beer, don't you, Sean? So we can have a closer look. Got everything connected up like it would be. There's only a little bit of RGB accenting the cooler. If it works, if it's connected right, it should light up at the very least. Beautiful hardware for its era specific. Again, to mention, we'll have a closer look at 11700K coupled with a 1070, GTX 1070 from yesteryear. And let's put it through its paces now, essentially. Cross our fingers, turn that switch. It's been on the test bench, so I don't expect anything to be foul. Let's turn her on. Sorry, what now? Let's try turning her on one more time. Oh, oh my. Well, I guess we're, <laughs> this was planned, obviously. Uh, well, I guess we're having a closer look, guys, inside the case at, at the component tree and whatnot. No, um, as you can tell, this stuff is not planned. Um, I magic clicked us to the point where there is still more work, it seems. Um, hopefully nothing's broken. Oh, wait a minute. I can see I haven't actually connected. I just realized they must have fallen aside. The last connection, which is the most finicky, be it the front IO connections in relation to the power and the reset key, has not been connected. I can not see it there so that means i have to open up the back side as well so you guys get to see the top notch cable management so we're going to turn it off for a second we will unplug everything just to have a proper look at it let's have a closer look at what is a beautiful pc and whether we can get this front io connected so you guys get a better view at it now essentially i'm going to take you in well, actually, let's take the lid off. Paint is a whistle, so let's have a closer look inside, y'all. There we go. Inside we go, people. This is a B660M MSI mortar motherboard. It's got the Wi-Fi variant, and because of the Wi-Fi, it's silver as opposed to what will be black metallic in some way, shape, or form. So it can suit a white build as well, if interested. 1070 is obviously gigabyte. It's been tuned already. The CPU has been tuned. CPU has been tuned to 4.6 gigahertz all core. But with the IPS gains, that's plenty for something like this. I'll, I'll tell you right now, it's probably on the equivalency of 5, 6, 5, 5.1 gigahertz or something like that. Uh, this 1070 on the other hand was showing promise. I won't lie. So we will test that eventually. And yeah, as you guys see, it's a very clean build. Cable wise, just one cable just there. Cable wise, just one cable just there. And apart from that, that monstrosity, hopefully I can hide a little better still. And this cooler was a nightmare because it was on upside down originally. And the exhaust was the wrong way around. Now it's all right. They meant well, I'm sure. All right, so we're looking at the uh, what I was trying to avoid, guys, because critiques aside i'm an expert at this stuff aren't i so we're going to have to open up the back side here still and what is the piece of resistance of some is apologize for the mess please forgive what is essentially done it's on an angle like it's not perfect but it goes up there comes down here that's not a modular or semi-modular power supply it's all the cables in there dual cables going up here Everything's secured. Now the RGB on the other hand, for the cooler, the button's just under the GPU. Yeah, we've got the two terabyte Samsung HDD and we've got the Samsung one terabyte NV, uh, one terabyte SSD boot drive with Windows 10 Pro. With this type of hardware, in relation to some loading times, the NVMe not being utilized, it's a shame, okay? The system will be a lot crisper. But in relation to game performance, I'm not expecting much of a difference, frankly. In relation to, say, what we're going to run through, some testing, Cinebench, we'll run that. We'll run Cinebench R15, we'll smash that, we'll double-check temps, and that's relatively quick. And then with that being said, what we will do is probably run an era-specific to the thermal take view 27 case and the gpu especially which is something maybe like fire strike or something for it's always a fun run dawn fire strike and we'll see how she scores so let me get this connected at the snap of my fingers 
We'll be back with round number two of pressing the power button on Let's Go. And back we are again. It's all connected. I've left the case lid off this time and back in front to let a little light in. The, I was originally on the test bench, honestly, uh, crossed my fingers, uh, hoping that this cooler could handle this really hot 11 gen chip, especially under 100% loads where necessary, even though gaming is going to be the predominant feature set of this PC's utilization PPO. Look, enough said, let's turn it on first and find out whether I mankeyed up the job or not. Three, two, one, cross our fingers, guys. Let's go, gods. Oh my god. Oh, the switch. Yikes. Turn that on. Three, two, one. Cross our fingers, guys. Here we go. And we should get into Windows straight away. There it is. Suss out what we are dealing with. I apologize for the monitor per se. We lost CPU and everything's connected properly. RAM is highlighted. I think I had to go into HDMI. Cross our fingers, that's the case, guys. It is. Thank God we're into Windows. Oh, I thought I cooked the CPU for a second. But luckily, I wasn't teaching you all because when I teach, that's when I break. It's a lot of fun. She's whisper quiet. We will have to load up and double check the fan profiles, I think. In the... Jesus Christ. Alrighty. So that's plenty of bloopers. That's what happens when you get cocky. All right, let's, uh, let's bring everyone in for a closer view. Move next background. Oh, hello. That's a bit deeper in the blues, but this is an old 10 year old Aces monitor. Anyway, first things first, we'll just bring up diagnostics. So in idle, I believe it was fairly subdued, but temperature packages 37, 38, 46 on all cores fixed. Don't judge until you try the 11 gen at this level. Everything else is running Schmitten. In idle, that GPU is pulling about 8 watts. In idle, currently, we're pulling about 27, 28 watts on the uh, CPU. Considering the clocks, it's pretty decent because the voltages are fairly lowish. What we are going to do is open up Cinebench R15. Real quickly, well, this is Cinebench R23. We'll close that. We'll open up Cinebench R15 because it smashes it. We've got some scores here already in relation to what we're working, essentially. Okay, so the score to beat is 2296, 2292, 2277, 2253. It's all very relative and, and close, but these were diff similar frequencies with different voltages and or trying to get a higher frequency and just hotter temperatures and everything within margin of error. I'm going to clear min max so that we get temperatures here. We're looking at temperatures on the CPU up here and what they're going to run at. I expect us honestly not to go over 74. Let's stop stagnating and procrastinating and run. If something's above 74 or something, then some settings have somehow changed. 73, guys, so it's smashing it already. 72, it's dropped it. See? 73, 73, 73, and we're finished. And with marginal area, we got 2295 when our top was 2296 with a new drive installed as well. Okay, now we're going to do an OpenGL run just to get a fix for things, get the graphics card a little warmed up. Score to beat is not 99.6.2, but hopefully within margin of error, we'll be close to the top score that will be highlighted. Probably it's still there. This is like a quirk with Cinebench R15. I like it because of the OpenGL run. It sort of it escalates itself in relation to if you get an extra 40 after tweaking stuff here, you probably get an extra 10 to 15 translation in a game like Warzone or something, for example. Tech Consoles Episode 8 at the Tech Minutes Corner. Hit the like and subscribe button. And what score did we currently get? 247.83 frames in the OpenGL Cinebench R15 run, guys. I think with this card, that is something very, very special. Can Do you guys need a confirmation on that? I shit you guys not. I told you guys you guys were in for a tree. You got 242 there. We just topped our top by five frames at that level already. Okay, we're doing one more test, guys. And it's time for Fire Strike. Fire Strike. Let's go into 3D Mark. And I'm going to have to put in my secret juju. Getting really excited here, guys. 
very, very excited. Everyone, person in these days heard about the new GPU and system on the block. It's actually a 2015, 2016 system with an 11700K. We're going to sign in. We'll let our Steam do its thing. Okay, scanning system info, guys. Wish, wish, wish this client luck and this. And, and then, for heaven's sake, Unigen Heaven can always be run at some point. But I think Jace Two Cents has gone through. Like, I think he uses it as a wallpaper nowadays with his 49. He's just running in the background, chugging away. We're not going to do time spy for time being. We will go to benchmarks and do the default run, which is Fly Strike DirectX 11. So that's our AMD thing. We're going on the AMD's territory. We're not going to get the Hall of Fame top, but in relation to the hardware that we currently have, we'll see how we go. Cross our fingers. Everything's running good. It'll give us a rundown as well at the end. Uh, first, we have to go through the demo. And then we got test one, test two, the CPU test, the combined test, and we're done. So it's a beautiful thing. I'm going to somewhat fast forward through it and all. Everyone can enjoy the flashback demo now that it's loaded. Let's go. This is obviously the demo. It runs for a little bit. Uh, it's unfair to some people who try to get top scores in relation to these because yeah it saturates and heats up everything as well before you even get into the testing itself which is scored then but it's a beautiful demo i love it anyway guys we're not going to keep you waiting because i'm going to be doing the running narrative in relation to the testing itself Hopefully we'll get through with no hunky dory guys. Trying to be cool here, but so far it hasn't crashed or anything. I don't expect it to. It, it has been tested for stability already on the test bench. That's the best time to do it, guys. Just like you know, this young uh, morsel of a bean is stable now. Uh, she better get her shit together because he's come quick in. So yeah. It's called Fire Strike. And why is it Fire Strike when or is he is his name Fire Strike there? Yeah? Try to sneak up on him, do the sneaky sneaky. Now that looks not like fire to me. I mean he looks like Ooh, Fire Strike. Brought to you by Aces. I'm nervous guys because I'm just hoping this works well otherwise there's a lot more work to get done and I'm pretty much on the cups of saying that this is finalized and finished this CPU and graphics card combo no it's not a combo it's a complete PC and it's a unit with those open GL runs you know, not the stagnation, but the word I'm looking for, the elevation of everything in relation to how I picture it to be, you know, I expect. I don't know what to expect, actually. I don't know what to expect, guys. Anyway, we'll run through these tests, I think. Uh, everything seems hunky-dory. We're up to graphics test number two.
Alrighty, so where's my coffee? I'm getting uh, anxiety attacks, so let's have some more caffeine, people. Okay, so now we're doing the physics physics test, people. And look, it's gone at 89 or so frames starting off with 87 ish. It's bumped it up 89 again. Uh, that's that's pretty solid. That's not what you think a 4.6 gigahertz processor on Vistrike would be holding, you know? So scaling wise, it's a weird thing in this 11th gen. I've got a 10th gen there, I've got a 9th gen over there. You know, I'm thinking about 13th gen. I uh, missed out on the 11th and the 12th. But the 13th gen I would consider if I could do the shift rooney with the computers in the house and put a better one in the kitchen that can run Windows 11 finally but what is this now in relation to I think it's the combined test I believe and it's the last one that will conclude what has been tech consults episode 8 people I appreciate the videos don't forget to hit the like and or subscribe button and guys we got 18054 we just got what's called a legendary, legendary, what is this, sorry? Best 17921, 1805. The NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070. We just beat the best guys. And look, to be honest, there's the scores. Let's compare results online and find out what we're going. In relation to the hardware that is specific to this machine, uh, just CPU and GPU, okay? Uh, it's better than 81% of all results, okay? And I didn't want to say this before to jinx it, guys, but it was a slight setup in relation to this. I knew we were going to get a good result, okay? That being said, what we've gotten here is a valid result as specified over here, and And it's the highest. Your score, 1805, 18054, best 17921. World's best fire strike score with the video GeForce GDX 1070 and 11 gen Intel Core i7 11700KF. So we just smashed that record by 133. 133. So happens to be the memory DRAM clock. Uh, so if we have a closer look down here, Sebluka is the user. We're going to edit the name and put in Technus Corner YouTube Sebluka. We're going to edit the description and put in 4.6 gigahertz all day, all core fixed. We achieved legendary for the second time. We, we beat out our, our top score. So that's what I was hiding from you guys. And I'm really happy it's consistent as well. So we're going to update that also. We're going to update that also. Did I update that this, update this before? And we can see here, um, average clock frequency, 1980 megahertz for the card. I was hitting, I was clipping 2012. Okay, 1557 15, is its base essentially. Memory clock. Memory clock, we... Oh, that's memory. And the memory's uh, got an offset of about 500, I believe, from memory. Uh, average temperature on the car was 56 degrees running that whole test. So that's hunky-dory. 4.6 there. And did I say 4.6 gigahertz is a great, great thing not to be uh, shunned at? So I got myself in the picture here. And... Uh, Average temperature on that CPU was 59 degrees, so we can't complain. There's the 32 gigabytes of Kingston DDR4 Fury, okay, and a couple of disabled states. And on that NVMe, I mean, not, I, I correct myself, on that SSD, guys, hunky dory for gaming, can't complain. Don't worry if you haven't got the NVMe, you might not be as fast on the loads, but usually, you know, after you're fragged out, uh, those respawn loads are capped so that slower computers can catch up. Yeah, so. With that said, guys, my name is Sabluka again. Thanks for joining us at the Technus Corner for Tech Consults Episode 8. Number 7 will be 
almost heaven and it's coming out after eight. I apologize for that. Please hit the like and subscribe button and share this because we got a world record today. So yeah, we did it. Peace out, y'all. Just after the fact, one more thing, guys. There's the 17291, the last one we ran. And just to prove that that was the best official. And we've got our score just a bit higher than that again. And that was done 11 o'clock last night. And what is uh, now 1.30 a.m. today, probably your time, not ours. Um, but, yeah, peace out, y'all. Bye.